as you can see in the background, we're still in Katowice, Poland, and now we are in Krakow. No, I'm just kidding, we're already in Krakow. This is a green screen because we're in a mall and I just uh, tried to find a cool way to start this video. Let's do some street photography. See you later. Hello and welcome to yet another video, this time about a relaxing day of street photography in one of Poland's most beautiful cities. I went to Poland for a street photography holiday. Yes, the whole point of this trip was to do nothing else but street photography. In fact, I even decided to not film anything for the channel, since I wanted to fully focus on taking photos and not spend time thinking about video as well. But last minute I decided otherwise and brought my video equipment on our day trip to Krakow. Yeah. In total we stayed in Poland for four days, three in Katowice and one in Krakow. And if I say we, I mean me and my friend Radek, who is also a street photographer and whose shots you will also see in this video. Radek and I have met by coincidence through a marketplace website where I got rid of some of my camera equipment. We stayed in touch and went shooting together from time to time when we had the idea to do a dedicated photography trip together. Radek is originally from Poland and since I wanted to freshen up my Polish as well, our destination of choice was pretty obvious. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit hungover today. We've been out drinking yesterday. You can see me, can you? Langsam bin ich ein bisschen K.O. Okay, this is probably the first time I'm doing street photography, like a little bit hungover. Like not a lot, but yesterday I was, uh, or we hosted like the street photography kind of meetup slash photo walk. And we had a couple of beers and I only had like two and a half large beers and the people who were there will probably laugh at me that I'm a little bit hungover. But I'm a lightweight and I never drink so yeah, having a little bit of a headache. But there's no excuse, you always have to go out the next day and shoot nonetheless. So yeah, Radek is uh, preparing his camera because I stole the strap from him because I don't have one here on this camera. But yeah, we're um, at the Wawel. Is it called Marvel? Marvel, yeah. Castle, uh, even though it's closed today, just to take some more shots. And um, yeah, to, to fight the hangover, you have to go out and shoot. Kraków is probably one of Poland's most touristy cities. It's the second largest and also one of the oldest cities in Poland. And we visited the city during a weekend, so it was really, really packed. Busy places usually make street photography a bit easier, since you can just dive into the crowds and don't draw too much attention to you. However, I feel like the crowded places feel different if they are mostly packed with tourists or with locals. Obviously, we stayed in the more touristy areas, like the Rynek Gówne, the main market square, the Wawel Castle, the Sukjanice Cloth Hall, as well as the Boulevard Wichlane promenade around the river. It's no wonder Krakow is so popular amongst tourists though, since it truly is beautiful, with amazing architecture and a lot of history to discover. If you can, I would recommend to spend the night, because the city gets even prettier once the sun has set. Czy mogę Pani zdjęcie zrobić? Ja jestem fotografką, bo to tak fajnie wygląda z tym kapeluszem i... Tak? Ja fa... Tak, tak, tak jest, tak jest dobrze. Tylko... Moment... Ale fajne. Je jeszcze jedno? A, a nie, tutaj było lepiej. Tak, tak, tak. O, dziękuję bardzo. Za zajemnego dnia. <laughs> dziękuję. For me, it was also an interesting experience to approach people in Polish. 
My parents are Polish, but I was born in Germany, which means that I grew up bilingual, mostly talking German, but being surrounded with Polish language throughout my upbringing. My Polish is pretty rusty though, since I don't have a lot of situations to practice these days, but I had the goal in mind to talk to people in Polish if I wanted to take that portrait. Of course, people could probably hear that Polish is not my main language, but I still feel like it transports some connectedness and trust to make the effort of talking in the country's language, especially since a lot of Polish people from the older generation do not speak any English. quiet corner here um, yeah because I wanted to talk about something real quick because today we are in Krakow but yesterday I was in Katowice and Katowice is a rather small city with not so many inhabitants it's not like super known not super big not super touristy but nonetheless um, we decided well my friend uh, Radek and I decided to host a photo walk in Katowice instead of Krakow because we wanted to see how many people would actually come and in the end we were a group of six people which I know isn't that much however uh, yeah it was such a fun day it was uh, very cool to hang out and meet like-minded people and this kind of showed me that you don't need a big city and you don't need like uh, a touristy spot for people to connect um, when I hosted a photo walk in Berlin before it was like a totally different thing we were almost like 30 people so it was like very crowded but yeah hosting this photo walk in Katowice actually showed me that you can build a community no matter where it's uh, always possible to find other people that are like-minded so it was a very cool experience but today nonetheless I'm quite happy to take some photos in a more crowded and more packed space so yeah without any further ado let's continue shooting During this day I went through three rolls of film in my Leica M6, two rolls of Kodak T-Max 100, which quickly became one of my favorite slow black and white films ever, as well as an exotic roll of film called Kiki Pan 320, where the box is shaped like a cat. And everyone who knows me knows that the combination of film and cats couldn't be more fitting, so I was very excited to give this one a try. To be honest, I wasn't super happy with the Kiki Pan results. I exposed it at ISO 200 and nonetheless the results came out rather grainy, looking pretty underexposed. I couldn't really find much information on this film stock and I am not sure if it truly is a new emulsion or just a rebranded film of some sorts. Apparently it is packaged by Camera Film Photo in Hong Kong, but the film itself seems to be produced in Germany and the UK. To me it almost has this classic surveillance film look, being very grainy, punchy and contrasty, but sadly without retaining a lot of detail. <laughs> hidden self-portraits if you have like your shadow incorporated into into the frame i think that's always a little bit fun <laughs> We were supposed to use the light and take some photos, but we're so drained and tired, so we're just chilling in the park, soaking in some rays of light, and I think I even got a sunburn here. But yeah, sometimes it's very important to make or to take breaks and chill. <laughs> so Radek just told me a very nice trick to kind of see how fast the sun is setting and he said to just put out your hand and count how many fingers you have from the tip of the sun to the rest of the horizon because each finger is like approximately 15 minutes so for example now if i count i have like 
probably six or seven fingers left so the sun will set in like yeah let's say one hour 45 minutes which is kind of nice i mean it's not really precise but it's enough to kind of calculate and estimate on how much light you have left and if you are wondering why i am shooting black and white on such a sunny and nice day well, it is because I'm doing a self-imposed one-year black and white challenge for all of 2023. I'm gonna have my portrait taken now, so yeah, have to put you away for that moment. It's slowly coming to an end now, but back when I recorded this video, it was at the peak of summer and probably the hardest time of the whole challenge for me. If you want to follow along this black and white journey and also see what comes after this, you should consider to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram at Karin Mayoka. Zapraszam. Mo mogę ci coś spytać? Ja nie mówię aż tak dobrze po polsku, ale ja jestem fotografką i ja się ch chciałam zapytać, czy mogę zdjęcie ci zrobić? Tak? Mówisz po angielsku czy trochę? Yes, yes. Maybe can we just do one like in the middle of the street? You will just stand there and I will take one closer one and one that's a little bit further away. Is that fine for you? Okay, okay. okay thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, you did this before, like being photographed, right? Because you look so professional. <laughs> no? Once it's done, I will send it to you. <laughs> okay, have a nice day. <laughs> bye bye. Overall, it was a really relaxing day of street photography. Radek and I split up from time to time to go our own ways to shoot, but met again to go to different places, eat food and also chill. If you are out all day, those little breaks of getting a coffee or just resting in the sun really fill up the batteries and make it easier to be able to properly focus again. Well, literally, but also figuratively. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this day of shooting. I didn't bring home too many portfolio shots, but I feel like the collection of the images as a set works really well. And of course, I would also be interested to hear your thoughts. Which of these images did you like best? And what is your approach to street photography? Do you go out for the whole day or just a couple of hours? And do you prefer to go out alone or also together with other people? I would be really interested to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments down below. So this was everything for today. I really hope you enjoyed the images. It was very difficult to only shoot black and white here because there were so many colors going on. But I think I'm rambling about this black and white thing in every video, so I'm gonna leave it at that. So thank you so much for watching. And that being said, I would say, uh, yeah, see you in the next one.